I would like to start my homily with a story. While driving on their way to the province, a couple stopped for lunch at a restaurant along the highway. After a quick meal, they resumed their trip. But after traveling for a half an hour, the woman realized that she left her glasses in the restaurant. When the husband learned about it, he was very angry. But he had no choice. They had to return to the restaurant to retrieve the, her glasses. All the way back, the husband complained and berated his wife relentlessly. Finally, when they arrived at the restaurant, the woman got out of the car and as she heard inside, the husband called out to her, while you're in there, you might as well get my wallet and my credit card. <laughs> correct a fool, and he will hate you. But correct a wise, and he will appreciate you. Question, which is easier, to correct someone or be corrected by someone? It's both hard difficult, challenging. It takes a lot of humility and courage. The relationship should be built on trust and love. So the reading for today gives us two lessons. One, why we have to correct each other. And then second, how we correct each other. The reading this Sunday reminds us of that sin is objectively re re real. And it is extremely dangerous to our soul. We have the serious obligation to teach and remind one another about this. Failure to do so would be a grave sin of omission. So that's why we have to correct each other. In the first reading, Prophet Ezekiel gives us this warning, and you have heard that, right? Being aware of our relationship with each other he was appointed as a prophet to be a watchman to the people of Israel. And it's a beautiful symbol, watchman. So he's in the tower watching for any danger. And so he will sound the alarm with the impending danger. And I think this is a beautiful reminder to all of us that we are all watchmen for people that God has entrusted to us. It is our duty to inform people of the consequences of the evil actions as enumerated in the second reading. Remember, I remember this reading in the, gospel, in the, in the Genesis account. When the Lord first asked Cain about the murder of Abel, he worded it in a way that tried to help Cain realize his responsibility to his brother. He, uh, he said, where is Abel, your brother? Cain responded, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? So, yes, we are our brother's, our sister's keeper. Even though we live in a world that teaches us to mind your own business, it does not count when someone is drowning at the mercy of the criminal or committing a crime themselves, if we love someone, we cannot leave them in an ignorance about the evil they are doing. I love this word from Pope Francis. He said, if you leave the other in his error without correcting him, you become co-responsible. If you don't correct him, this is tantamount to a failure to help. So remind each other, the sin of omission, our relationship with them, our duty. And it is coincide also with the second reading. I love this so much. With St. Paul's letter to the Romans, he said, Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. Isn't that beautiful? that we have to do this because we owe love to them. We are correcting others not because of fear that I may be punished. No, change that. Genuine care and pure love, that's why I am trying to correct the other. 
because he said that to the Romans, love does no evil to neighbor. Because love is willing the good of the other. I want you to be your best. I don't want you to be in danger. So it is a time for us to examine ourselves, maybe think back the times when we are put into the situation that we have to correct someone. I would share to you two stories. One is my, with my brother priest. He said, there was a time that he was undergoing a difficult time. And some of his friends, including me, know the situation. But the sad thing is that he said, continued, no one dared to ask or check on him. Guilty as charged. Another story, a young girl was getting tired of her parents' constant corrections and reminders. But I told her, think of it. Think of this. What if you are doing wrong and no one is correcting you as if they don't care anymore? So, in the perspective of gratitude, take it positively because they don't want you to be in danger. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we correct each other not because we are better than them or we have no fault, but because of love and concern. I'm still growing to that. I need corrections too. Sometimes I'm blinded with what I'm doing. And I also need to have courage to correct others too. With pure love and humility, remember, we are appointed watchmen to sound off the alarm in face of danger. We are each other's keeper. So that's why we have to correct each other. And then second we go now, how do we correct each other? The gospel clearly states the points, the steps that we have to take. First. Take the initiative. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. So make it private, make it personal. See in that brother a relationship, fraternal correction. Fraternal is brotherly correction. So there's already a relationship, a brotherly or a sisterly relationship. That's why you have to correct them in charity. It is an act of charity to correct someone. Do not just let time heal itself or let others correct them. No. It is our duty. Second, if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. So this is the second step, not the first step. Our tendency is to make it as a first step. We talk about people. And then, after which we talk to the person concerned. No. That is harming already the other. Love does not intend to harm the other. Okay? Third, if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would treat a Gentile or a tax collector. Who, who, who wrote this gospel? Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector. So he's saying that God, Jesus Christ, did not give up on him. Even though he was, as the gospel said, treat him as he would treat a Gentile or a tax collector. Have we done our best to correct someone? Or have we just been afraid to correct them because it might go back to us? No. And of course, finally, pray the very last sentence of the gospel where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in their midst. So pray so that the person you're correcting may continue to be open or send someone else if it is not you who would correct that person. Many, many parents said, my children are not listening to me. So pray for God to send the right person to correct your children. Right? So pray. Ask other people to pray with you. This congregation, that's why there's an intercessory prayer. 
We pray with other people to make it stronger, the desire. That is what the church do together. So the main purpose of fraternal correction is to bring back the person to the community, to the family, to the fold of Christ. The intention of Jesus is not to lose anyone, but to restore and bring back the person to wholeness. So let us pray. Unceasing before people you hate and also people who hate you. So pray. Prayer changes hearts. At times, not immediately the one prayed for, but truly the one who prays. You may not love the person and not be your friends again with that person, but truly, the more you pray for an enemy, the less you will hate them. And the more hate is lessened, the enmity simmers down as well. A beautiful gospel reading today. Why we have to correct each other and how to correct each other. Let us be empowered by this reality of our faith in our relationship with one another. Amen.